Good day everyone, we will be discussing the concept of population dynamics. For the discussion, we will be tackling the following. How demographic factors affect population size, effects of these factors, how population growth is depicted, the application of knowing limits to population growth, the density independent factor and its effect on population growth, and lastly, how density dependent factors limit population growth. According to Dr. Aimee Dupo, Population is a group of individuals inhabiting a specific area at the same time. Also, according to her, population dynamics concerns factors influencing changes to a population through reproduction, death, or movement. These factors are natality, mortality, immigration, and immigration. Natality and immigration increases the population growth as they are related to the reproduction and moving in of population. These two add up the population totality, whereas mortality and immigration are the result of population decline as they are related to the deaths and moving out of the population. These factors themselves are not mutually exclusive to each other, but their effects are. The effects of these demographic factors are population growth and population decline, which cannot happen at the same time in one specific population, thus they are mutually exclusive events. Going to the next one is population growth. It is depicted through life tables, age sex pyramid, survivorship curves, population growth rate, its formula and patterns. For life tables, it is a record that clearly shows the mortality and survival in a population. There are four elements that one must remember. Age interval in years, number surviving at beginning of age interval out of 1,000 born, number dying in age interval out of 1,000 born, and rate of mortality that usually reaches to zero. For the age sex pyramid, is a graphic representation of the population that can show whether there is a rapid growth, slow growth, stable, or shrinking of the population. Survivorship curves, on the other hand, is a graphical representation of the elements on the life table and has three known types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1, the case strategy survivorship curve, it is the most common type humans and primates have. In this type of survivorship curve, an offspring needs lots of parental care from their parents to survive. Species under these don't have lots of offspring as well, and they tend to have a long lifespan, usually dying when they are already old. Type 2 survivorship curve is more common for bird species. Unlike type 1 and type 3, this type has a linear graph for death. The organism's survival is not dependent on their age, but almost like a type 1, significant parental care is needed and they have few offsprings as well. Type 3, the R strategy survivorship curve on the other hand has an R-like shape curve on the graph. This type is common for trees, marine invertebrates, and most fishes. Unlike the two other types, organisms under these have lots of offsprings, but in comparison, the survival rate is not high. Only a few offspring survive through their youth, but those few that do tend to have quite long lives. Another difference from the two other types is that organisms under this type don't really invest a lot of effort in providing for their offsprings. There are two other growth patterns that may occur depending on the environmental condition, namely the exponential or J-shaped growth pattern and the logistic sigmoidal or S-shaped growth patterns. The exponential growth pattern occurs in an ideal unlimited environment, while the logistic or sigmoidal growth pattern occurs when the growth rate is slowed by environmental pressures. Population growth rate is the change in number per unit time equals to the product of the existing population size n and the innate capacity of increase of the population r. The two types of growth patterns mentioned beforehand have formulas as well as can be seen on this slide. Exponential growth rates don't change even if the population grows larger, while the logistic growth rate gets smaller as the population approaches its maximum capacity. Carrying capacity K is a determining factor of the number of organisms that can survive in a given environment or area. There are five environmental resistance factors that set the carrying capacity K. Availability of raw materials, availability of energy, availability of space, accumulation of waste products and their means of disposal, and lastly, interactions among organisms. Population growth has four paces that need to be observed. The first pace is the log pace, where population size is still small and there is abundant resources. 
Next, the log or exponential pace. This rapid growth and utilization of app resources is fast. The third pace is stationary pace where there is no population growth and the carrying capacity is rich. And lastly, the death or decline pace, the pace wherein the population has already exceeded its carrying capacity. Through the years, humans have learned the limits of population growth. That said, no population can increase without living. Instead, populations in natural ecosystems increase or decrease in response to the change of the factors that restrict growth. Limiting factors are resources or other environmental elements that can lower the population growth, increase death rates, or lead to emigration. By changing birth and death rates within the environment's carrying capacity, population growth is limited by the environment. As the environmental changes, the carrying capacity varies as well. And knowing this as a result, humans can prevent and make solutions like increasing the carrying capacity of the environment. For example, we are constructing more buildings to supply the demand in previously limited habitats and investing in researching renewable resources since fossil fuels are gradually running out. Knowing the limits of population growth enables humans to understand the type of solution needed in present circumstances, force you something up front, and preview future catastrophes. However, what exactly are these environmental limiting factors? Generally, we can split the factors that regulate population growth into two main groups, density-dependent and density-independent. Density-dependent factors are limiting factors influenced by the population size, these are biotic factors, such as disease and parasites, competition, predation, and waste accumulation. Diseases and parasites are likely to spread faster in an area with large population or at maximum carrying capacity since individuals live close to each other. Also, the competition for resources like food, water, mates, and habitats is heightened because of limited resources that cannot accommodate everyone. Predator-prey relationships are also affected in a way that the prey population decreases by it being eaten by predators. And when the prey population shrinks, the competition for food increases which leads to the death of predators through starvation and a decrease in reproduction. When there is a decline in a predator population, then prey will increase in population, and the cycles goes on. Waste accumulation is a source of diseases and parasites, which also contributes to the death of individuals and a decrease in population growth. Density-dependent factors regulate population growth by limiting the number of individuals present in the area to the size that can be accommodated or within carrying capacity. Density-dependent factors can have either a positive or negative correlation to population size. With a positive relationship, these limiting factors increase with the size of the population and limit growth as population size increases. With a negative relationship, population growth is limited at low densities and becomes less limited as it grows. In contrast, density-independent factors that contribute to population regulation are abiotic factors, including nutrient limitation, environmental pollutants, and climate extremes including seasonal cycles such as monsoons. In addition, catastrophic factors such as natural disasters, wildfires, and temperature changes can also impact population growth and count as density-independent factors. Density-dependent 